Hello there, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. And here's what we're doing today. Yep, we're going to simulate pull focus in Photoshop. Okay, let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. I've got one layer, it's called background, so I'm going to get hold of the lock here and just drag it down to the rubbish bin or trash can, depending on which side of the Atlantic you're from. And this one's called layer zero. I'm going to control J, command J on a Mac to jump that. And then I'm going to rename these. So I'm going to double click and I'm going to call this one front. And I'm going to call the other one, double click. I'm going to call it back. Okay. So front, the front is going to be in focus and back, the back's going to be in focus. Let's turn off the visibility of back, choose front. And then I'm going to go to filter, blur and field blur and that's going to put a point down in the middle and you'll notice it's got this ring around the outside now this is controlling how much blur there is so if i click and then drag it around you can see i'm controlling the amount of blur there's also that center dot there that's where i can click and i can drag it around and i'm going to drag it onto the back board there I'm going to make it a bit more blurry. Let's go up somewhere around the 40-ish. 43 should do me OK. But now my front board is out of focus. So I can just click down and another point appears. And I can twirl this down until I get to zero. And now I've got... Ooh, went too far. Now I've got the back is out of focus and the front is in focus. Now you can see it's getting a little bit fiddly, but that's OK. We're done now. OK, I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, it renders it out for us. And we have an out of focus background, in focus foreground. Good. Let's turn on the visibility of back, choose that layer. And then I'm going to go to filter, whoop, filter, blur and field blur. And we're going to do the same again. This time, because it was so fiddly last time, I might use the... Uh, Controls on the right hand side. Let's put this one up. Well, I'm going to go right up this time, maybe to 53. Look at that. Okay, and then put down another point. And this time I'm going to choose zero on the right hand side. Makes it a bit easier, doesn't it? And click OK. And then sure enough, it's going to render that out for us as well. And now we have a back in focus and a front in focus. Now let's put that into some kind of pulling focus kind of way. We're going to need a timeline for that. Now I've got my timeline down the bottom. I can double click here. If yours isn't down there, then you can always go to window and then timeline, uh, which is just there. And then I need this one to say create a video timeline. If it doesn't, then just click this downward facing arrow and choose it from the drop down menu. Click on where it says create video timeline. And there's our two layers, front and back. But I don't want them stacked one on top of the other. So I'm just going to use the mountains here just to click on those, make it fit a bit better on screen, and then click and drag on my back, and then just drop it into the same stream, if you like. And when I do, I can drop it anywhere. It'll snap to the end. There we go. OK. Now I need to make this a nice transition between the two. Sure enough, there is a transitions right here. If I click on that, there's a crossfade. And I want the crossfade, and in my case, about a second works nicely. So I click and I drag that down and just let go. So let's give that a play and see how it looks. Here we go, front in focus, and then there we are. It pulls the focus, so the back's in focus. Good. OK, let's do one more. This time I've got an image from Photolia stock image site. And I'm going to again make the background layer into an ordinary layer. And Control or Command J to jump it, duplicate it. And then rename it front and back, just so as I know where I am. Back. And then again, turn off the visibility, choose front, filter, blur field blur. Now don't forget you can choose the iris blur or tilt shift works well, especially with the image like we did to start with. Um, but that's up to you to experiment with that. Okay, we're on front, which is in focus front. So I'm going to take this to the back a bit more, blur it out. 
and then put in another point unblur that again I'm going to go over to the right hand side and type zero in and that's looking good press OK and let that one render itself out to the layer make the other layer visible click on it of course filter blur field blur and then this time let's go crank it up but we want the front out of focus this time and the background in focus zero okay we need this one to be pulled a bit further over I think so so we get the end of the bus and this one wants to come this way a bit as well hmm okay there we go click OK off it goes does its magic and down to the timeline create a video timeline Make sure you can see it. I'm going to use a slidey bar this time. And drop it down. Get the crossfade. Drop that down. And there we go. I'm going to press Control 0 to fit everything on screen so as I can see what's going on. And let's play that and see how it looks. And there we are. That's OK. Let's give it another look, see how it goes. Might need a little bit more blur in there. But we can always tweak this, that's fine. OK, I'm happy with that. And we're going to stop that. Next, we just need to click this icon down the bottom here, this curly looking arrow, and it will ask us where we want to render the video to. You can see I'm going to call this one London Bus. I'm going to select the folder on my F drive, pull focus, and the rest is pretty much a standard. Um, I'm going to choose HDV720. 1280 by 720 is the default for YouTube, of course. So there we go. I can then click render and it will render it out for me. I'm Eric Rano. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this interesting. I'll see you again at tipsgrill.com. Bye bye for now.